Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Pyromancer here and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, we're gonna be just going over a topic that I think uh, I probably should address. I feel like I've been asked this um, so many times on my stream lately uh, that I really would like to just kind of address the question and that is, will I be returning for World of Warcraft Dragonflight? Um, let's talk about this for a second. Because as, as many of you know, uh, my YouTube, really like my Twitch, uh, was built upon World of Warcraft. I started that back in the day doing World of Warcraft Warlock guides, which were meh, you know, hit or miss, uh, but they did help a lot of people. I still get messages from people that say, I started watching from your Destruction Warlock guide or uh, your, your 6.2 Affliction guide or something like that. Uh, and that makes me feel really good to know that uh, some folks have stuck around through that. Um, you guys know I kind of got into the lore and story side of World of Warcraft after I stepped away from the harder, hard, more hardcore side of raiding. Because um, I used to be kind of like a myth, not kind of, I used to be a mythic raider in WoW, her formerly heroic. Um, for those of you that don't know, I started playing WoW and Mists of Pandaria. And I played all through MOP, all through WAD, all through Legion, um, all through BFA. And then Shadowlands kind of was hit or miss for me. I played through the majority of the start of Shadowlands. Basically when Corthia came out was uh, later on, I was that's kind of like when I dropped out. So just to give you a bit of history. Um, so now they have the new expansion Dragonflight coming out. And I know that the story and everything has, has expanded in some ways good, in some ways bad. I know there's been a lot of interesting retcons like uh, what you learn in, in Uldaman about uh, the knowledge of the Titan Keepers and what Odin may have been keeping from the mortals. Big shocker, Odin Sketchy, who would have thought? Uh, and, you know, learning that the Black Empire uh, is a little bit exaggerated in Chronicle, um, which <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, yep, been saying for years now that the Black Empire section of Chronicle didn't make any fucking sense and that uh, the logic uh, there and applied didn't make any sense with how they use their constructs and how <laughs> it, it just... Uh, it didn't seem cohesive, so to speak. The FlexiSpot OC14 Ergonomic Chair Pro features PU soft plastics, an adjustable seat, armrests, and headrest, a very sturdy aluminum alloy chassis, and silent, smooth PU wheels designed to protect your floor. At half the cost of other high-end office chairs, the OC14 is a great option for anyone looking to take their work or gaming space to the next level. While you're on FlexiSpot.com, you can take a peek at the award-winning selection of height-adjustable sit-standing desks as well, like the E7 shown here. After six years of working with FlexiSpot, I can personally vouch for the quality of their office furniture, and I really highly recommend checking out their Members' Day and Fall sales. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. So I'm not surprised at that. But there's been some expansion to that, right? You guys have the first ones now, right? Whatever that is. Uh, in my opinion, if the first ones aren't Azeroth and or Argus, then I don't know what to say. If Azeroth, who is named after a creator deity from a Lovecraftian lore, HP Lovecraft's deity, Azathoth, who is a dreaming god who dreams all of the universe into existence. And then when that god wakes up, all the universe is gone. Um, so, you know, you got Azeroth, which is tied to a dream. Azeroth, Azatoth, it's not waking up. You know, there could be some correlation there. Um, but if they end up not making Azeroth like the thing, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, you're go we're going into Dragonflight now. And now they're going back to, uh, you know, we're getting some Galakrond lore, which sounds really cool. Um, you're getting some, some uh, how the Dragonflights came to be via Titan experimentation, keepers and stuff like that. So there's a lot of really valuable narrative stuff happening. Now, from what I've heard, because I haven't been playing the game, I haven't kept up on it, a lot of a lot of this is being like found in like books and stuff in the game. So I must say I'm really glad to hear that, that these things are being elaborated on within the game and that you guys aren't being forced to buy a $20, $25, $30 book to get this extra information. So I'm really happy to hear those kinds of developments happening for WoW. But here's, here's the bottom line. Um, I want to talk about a little bit kind of like WoW and Final, and Final Fantasy. First off, I'm not one of the Final Fantasy players that thinks that Final Fantasy is perfect. It is not. And there are 
absolutely systems from World of Warcraft that I would kill to have in Final Fantasy. For instance, the collection systems in World of Warcraft for collecting gear and stuff like that is way better. And I, I think a lot of us that, that play Final Fantasy and especially those of us that have played WoW formerly are, are aware of that. Uh, FF's not infallible. And so I wanna make that very clear to you guys right now that I, I don't think that FF is a perfect game because uh, it's not. There are no perfect games in my opinion. Uh, but I think that Final Fantasy is a better MMO for me and for, for what I'm trying um, to do in my games and for what I enjoy. And by that, I mean, I really enjoy a lot of the casual content, the, you know, glamoring your character. So in other words, uh, World, World of Warcraft would call that transmog. Um, Final Fantasy has like housing and stuff. So people host, you know, parties and events and stuff at their at their houses, which is really cool and something that I wish that World of Warcraft could have. Um, you know, there's, uh, I think the graphic fidelity of Final Fantasy for me is is just more appealing. And all I say all of these things not to say that Final Fantasy is better, because I don't think that it can be measured as objectively better, especially from um, from a single person, right? No, regardless of how much experience I have in WoW, and I am at about 2,000 hours of playtime in Final Fantasy, um, I still think, you know, I, I don't see my opinion as like, the end all be all. So please just remember, I'm just one person and you are gonna find people in both the Final Fantasy community and in the WoW community that are just like, really, you know, um, kind of like tribalistic about their game and they just really want everyone to like it. Um, and I think it's important that like, that, uh, I don't know, maybe me as someone who is a former WoW player, like can, can like vocalize that there is a middle ground. Like there's definitely people that like play Final Fantasy that used to play WoW or maybe have never played WoW that definitely have complaints about this game. Um, don't let anyone trick you into feeling like uh, it's just objectively superior. And that goes for almost any MMO, right? People like what they like, okay? And that's why I say that I think Final Fantasy is just a better game for me. Now to answer the question, am I coming back to Dragonflight? Um, I, I don't see myself doing that. Um, and again, that's not to spite anybody or anything. I genuinely want World of Warcraft to be good. And I've said this on my stream before. Um, I hear so often, I want, uh, yeah, sure, I want WoW to be good because then it will make X or Y better. It'll make Final Fantasy better. It'll make RuneScape better, whatever it might be that people are saying. And I, I can't stand that because it always feels like people have to say that because they're not truly interested in something else becoming better. It's just about whether or not that's gonna make their thing better. And it's a very, it seems like selfish to me. So I, I would like to say, I want World of Warcraft to be good regardless of any effect or perceived effect that it could ever possibly have on Final Fantasy. I want WoW to be good because I want the people who love World of Warcraft to have an MMO that they can play that they love right? Period. Bottom line. I don't care about literally anything else. And I feel the same way about Final Fantasy. I want Final Fantasy be to be good, not to spite anybody else, but just because it's the game I play and I want it to be fucking good. And there's nothing wrong with saying that you want both games to be good and you don't have to make it some type of competition. If you want to, that's great because competition breeds innovation and it breeds change. And that's a good thing, right? But sometimes it comes off as like, oh yeah, you know, I want WoW to be good because it'll make Final Fantasy better. And it's like, dude, it's not about that. It's really not about that. Uh, and and I mean that, you know, I mean, you guys saw when when I left the WoW space, um, my reaction, you know, how upset I got. If you guys haven't seen that clip from Twitch, it's got a fucking quarter million views. Asmongold watched it. I don't know how you haven't seen it if you haven't, but... I got, I got very upset, you know, and I, I, as I have tended to do in the past, and I, I kind of said what I felt uh, in a bit of an outburst. Um, and I, that resonated with a lot of people. And, and the reason why is because it wasn't coming from a place of like, I want WoW to fail. It was coming from a place of like, I feel like WoW kind of failed around, around me and other people. Like, you know, it, was, it felt kind of like, I don't know, almost like heartbreaking, I guess, to an extent. Uh, and I think at that point I was just so disconnected from like Blizzard as a whole, you know, no confidence in the writers, not really a lot of confidence in the game system development. Um, but you know, the people that continue to play that game are, uh, you know, saying good things, saying good things about dragon writing and stuff like that. So I hope it's good and not for my sake, uh, but for yours and everyone else who wants to play WoW. 
Um, I, I'll be honest, I think the, the biggest uh, temptation that I've had to actually return to WoW is Wrath of the Lich King. <laughs> Um, which is funny because I'm not a person who played Wrath of the Lich King. As I said earlier, I started in Mists of Pandaria. Uh, but I have a, a a great friend who plays Wrath and is very, very, uh, you know, hooked into that. Um, and he actually proposed to me. He's, uh, you know, he got down on one knee and everything. No, um, he he posed to me this idea that he's like, hey, I'll come play Final Fantasy fourteen if you come and play Wrath. And... I almost accepted, but then I had to like consider something. And this is the thing that you need to know about Final Fantasy is that the experience getting to end game in World of Warcraft and in Final Fantasy are significantly different. If I were to come to World of Warcraft, it would take me a couple days, a week, whatever, to get a character caught up, get up to 80 and start working on dungeons and heroics and things. Uh... But in Final Fantasy, if he wanted to come play with me, he's got um, 300 to 400 hours worth of storyline before he gets to max level. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's one of those things where he's, you know, he's a story skipper and that's okay. But it's like, I don't really, you know, why would you come and play Final Fantasy when you're going to skip, <laughs> you know, well, the narrative, all the stuff that, um, a lot of the stuff that frankly I love about the game and if you were to do that and skip right to the end game, do I think that the Final Fantasy end game for like raiding and PVE, what people think of when they think of end game in World of Warcraft? Because remember, in World of Warcraft, the end game isn't as focused around glamour and housing and those extra things, right? Like in World of Warcraft, that is the raids, that is the PV, PVE and the end game PVP. Um, you know, those are the types of things that people think about. So if he were to kind of skip to the end and just focus on the raiding, the raiding in Final Fantasy is great, but... You know, there's some things about it like loot that are kind of wonky right now. So it's one of those things, right, where, you know, you try you try to make a deal and you just have to realize that they're two very different games. You know, one is very narratively reinforced through a mostly single player narrative for hundreds of hours that has a fuckload of world building. Um, and one is is more um, in, a, in a sense, more expansive and that it's uh, available through more mediums. Uh, whether that's short stories or books or whatever, like to actually get the full story of World of Warcraft, you have to seek externally, which is, has long been a flaw of World of Warcraft. I think many of us would agree with that. Uh, and if you don't, that's, I totally understand. I'm talking mostly about like buying books and stuff, like I mentioned before, like it just, it adds up. And that was one of the things that I kind of bitched about before. You know, I made the choice to buy all those World of Warcraft books and I still have those actually. They're just in the closet, but you know, they're expensive. And you know, to get that extra narrative felt like that's what you had to do. I bought uh, like one Final Fantasy book, uh, Chronicles uh, of the Light. And this is not like World of Warcraft Chronicle. This is a book of short stories and, and stuff like that. Um, and it's like, it's one book, right? Uh, and then I have my encyclopedias and, and some art books. But World of Warcraft has those novels and it's just very overwhelming. So anyway, to, to wrap up what I'm trying to say there, I just think it's a very different experience. And it's it's just... It's so different that when people ask, you know, you coming back to WoW and I say no, sometimes it feels like um, people take that as me saying that WoW is bad or that I hate WoW or that I don't want to go back to it. And as, as <laughs> yeah, when I was pissed off a year and a half ago uh, and I ranted about World of Warcraft, yeah, I was, uh, I was you know, in, a, in an emotional state then, so to speak. But I feel like I'm thinking pretty clear on it now and I... That's kind of where I'm at, you know. I, I feel like I'm more tempted to play Wrath than 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 Dragonflight, um, and I just think that there are some fundamental changes about World of Warcraft that would have to occur for me to want to come back. I think I graphically wanted something more out of World of Warcraft for a while, but I know that it has a unique art style and the engine limitations are a thing. I know though, I know that, um, you know. So I I do think I found that in FF with higher visual fidelity and for the most part. You know, there was just a lot that kind of, I felt like drove me away. Challenge modes going away in favor of Mythic Plus and when I feel like we could have maybe had both or I don't know, but that's kind of where I stand right now is just, um, you know, I hope WoW is good. I hope Dragonflight's good. I know pre-patch just came out and I hope you guys are enjoying it if you are playing that. Um, truth be told, if you come to my stream and you ask about WoW lore, I'm actually like pretty likely to respond to, to you. Uh, if it's new stuff that I don't know anything about, obviously that may not be the case. Um, but I actually still like to talk about WoW lore. I'm still confident about it. I still feel like I, I 
I, I have a, a great foundation of information. So it's not like my stream is just like, you can't talk about WoW or anything. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I would check out my Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash pyromancer. I play pretty much exclusively 14. That's pretty much it. I don't want to upset anyone. I, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or try to make one game seem like it's better than the other. Because I think, again, they're just they're just different games and, and just for different people that just want different things out of it. But I want WoW to be good for everyone that plays it, regardless of whether or not that helps my game. Because at the end of the day, like, it's okay to want for the better like health of another MMO, even if you're not getting anything out of it. Um, and I think that's the important thing to remember is that like, these are people with hobbies and friends who play this game, right? Like, I don't want anyone from WoW to like have all their friends quit and go to Final Fantasy. I don't want, you know, people from Final Fantasy have all their friends quit and go to WoW or stop playing in general. Like it doesn't have to be a trade, right? It can just be people stopping in general. That just sucks, right? That's, we play, a lot of us play MMOs and RPGs to play with friends. Um, and to have that continued social experience that we don't get out of single player games. So I just think that's the most important aspect of it. And looking out for each other as players and like not getting stepped on by the fucking company that's designing your game is like the most important thing. And I, and I mean that for World of Warcraft and I mean that for Final Fantasy. I like just, I don't know, that that's what it all comes down to for me. It's just like not letting the game's development and, and design like disrespect your time and you know just be unfun to play that's that's what it is so i hope that this touched on some things and maybe kind of um answered some questions for people maybe kind of quelled some concerns or frustrations um feel free to leave your thoughts down below you know this isn't again this isn't a wow versus final fantasy video this is a what does pyromancer want to play video um and just kind of a just kind of um you know, an honest one, sit down and talk about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button. It's the best way to know you enjoyed the video. And subscribing to my channel certainly does help. That's totally free. Um, but where I'd really love to see you is over on my Twitch. Again, that's twitch.tv slash pyromancer. Give a follow over there. And I would also highly recommend using the Discord link in the description down below. That will take you into my Discord. Um, and I ping the Discord when I go live every stream day. So if you're curious to know when I'm around, that will let you know. But it's generally Tuesday through Friday from about 10 or 11 a.m. Pacific time until I stop. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you guys. Thanks for coming to my channel, checking out this video, and I will, uh, I'll see you later. Peace!